welcome back uh, in the in continuation to the last lecture where we discussed uh, in some detail about uh, one of the important decision procedure method which is called as natural deduction method. So natural deduction method the idea here is is that we will be employing only some of the basic principles of uh, logic such as modus ponens, modus tollens uh, etc and all and then we will be deriving some of the theorems and all. So our, uh, the our program is like this that so all the valid formulas and all we are trying to find a proof for that. So if all the provable things are true and all the true formulas are provable then your system is considered to be complete. In, in this sense natural deduction uh, as a formal axiomatic system is considered to be uh, sound and is considered to be uh, complete in a sense that all provable theorems are true all true things are provable and all and also it is the case that. Uh, it is also said to be consistent and all. So uh, in this class I will be uh, uh, considering some more examples so that you will understand this method in a better way. So natural deduction method has uh, mainly uh, two important uh, methods and all so one is uh, uh, one in, in one of these things we will employ rule of conditional proofs in the second one we will be using reductio ad absurdum method. So what is considered to be a rule of conditional proof in case of natural deduction it is like this. Supposing from an assumption A we obtain in a proof something called B. So now B is a tautological consequence from A that means the last step of your proof is considered to be a theorem so it is also considered to be a tautology. So then what you will do here is, is that, that you will discharge the assumption A and then you will start writing A implies B. So you have to note that B is not a tautological consequence from A then obviously A implies B is also not tautologous. So what essentially we are trying to do here is, is that you start with A and then you got B and then you draw a line like this and you will say that A implies B is deduced from this thing. So this is one way of uh, one method in which you can prove theorems in natural deduction. Uh, what you will be doing here is you will be making use of some of the natural principles of logic and all. So together with that you have an assumption A and that led to B and uh, since A led to B and all you draw a line from A to B and then you will say that A plus B is reduced. So this is what is the first one and we will be trying to solve some problems. Uh, by using this particular kind of method and the second one is what we call it as reductio ad absurdum method. So the basic idea of this one is like this suppose a given formula x and you derive contradiction and all x implies uh, uh, something false or contradictory that means it should not be x and all but it should be not x. So the same thing can be represented in this way taking x assuming x into consideration you generated a contradiction. So when you generate a contradiction whenever you come across a literal and its negation and all like p and not p. So that is called as a consistent inconsistency or a contradiction and all. So if that is the case then so this means x implies contradiction so that means you draw a line like this and then you will say that uh, x uh, implies uh, contradiction that means it is not x is true and all. So instead of x it, you have to assume not x and all. So this is what uh, is called as a reductio ad absurdum kind of method. Uh, these are the two uh, things which you will employ in the natural deduction method apart from there are some natural uh, principles of uh, logic I mean simple rules which we employ in logic just like you know a person um, assuming that you are playing uh, some game and all. Uh, every player is supposed to learn some kind of uh, rules and all if he if he knows the rules minimal rules then you will be able to play in a satisfactory or better way and all you will not make faults and all. So in the same way so if you know these rules and all you will employing these things these rules together with some assumptions leads to the conclusion that you are trying to derive. So basically what we are essentially doing is simply this that we are trying to prove some theorems so why we are doing it we want to have some kind of proof mechanism for all the valid formulas and all. 
So this is also considered as one of the important decision procedure method which is simple. So the first rule is simple and straightforward whenever you have negation of negation of A you will replace it with A uh, this is what is called as rule of double negation and rule of addition says that if A is true then uh, since A is already true the semantics of uh, disjunction allows us to add any other kind of proposition B without disturbing the value truth value of A. So that means from A you can reduce A or B or uh, from B you can reduce B or A. So now the modus tollens rule is this that in the conditional A implies B A is considered to be antecedent and B is considered to be consequent and if you deny the consequent you have to deny the antecedent as well. So now the distinctive syllogism A or B and if you deny one of these possibilities then obviously the other one follows. Hypothetical syllogism is like transitivity property A in plus B, B in plus C then A has to go to C. These are simple rules and all A classical logic obeys these particular kinds of rules and all and you should note that uh, this applies to classical logic and all but when you apply to day to day situations or uh, some of the things which, uh, which you make use of it in day to day discourse then it might lead to some kind of counter intuitive uh, you might generate a counter intuitive inferences and all. So that is not our uh, interest at this moment but all these rules are truth preserving rules is obeyed by the classical logics that we are trying to talk about. So there are some other uh, rules and all uh, these rules are called as assumption discharge rules. So what are these assumption discharge rules they are like this let uh, delta be a set of uh, 0 or more assumptions I mean uh, if, you, if you start with one assumption it is uh, something some assumption needs to be there or you can start with 0 assumptions also that means it is a tautology or something like that. So that means already we uh, tautologies does not require any proof and all they are self evident truths you can take it for granted that they are all true absolutely true. So now assumption rules are assumption discharging rules are like this a given delta and for example B is deduced from A then we can discharge the assumption A and then you can say that it is A in place B is deduced from delta. So this is what is uh, the conditional proof given delta and A suppose if you reduce B from it then you can discharge the assumption A and you can say that A in place B is deduced from that one delta. The rule of disjunction tells us that given delta and A or B and you already deduce C from uh, A if that is the case and you already reduce C uh, from B given a delta so therefore you will also reduce C. So these are some of the uh, truth preserving kind of uh, rules and all uh, then the, the fourth rule tells us that uh, suppose if you deduce a contradiction from uh, given assumption A and, uh, and delta then obviously it should be not A rather than A. So these are some of the simple rules which we follow then there are some other logical equivalence relations which we employ it in the natural deduction method there are simple rules such as deduction uh, distributive law uh, P and Q or R is P and Q or P and R uh, then some De Morgan's laws especially especially when you are trying to uh, translate conjunctions into disjunctions you use De, De Morgan's laws and then one of the surprising thing for us is this absorption law if P R P and Q will become P1 and the other law is the other way around P and P or Q also becomes P. So whenever you come across a formula P or P and Q you just replace it with its logical equivalent relation that is P. So the contrapositive role is uh, straightforward P implies Q implies uh, not Q implies not P. So now we will make use of what is the, what essentially we are trying to do is, is that we are trying to show whether or not the conclusion follows from the premises or not. So let us assume that uh, these are the three things uh, uh, premises are P and Q or not R and second one is P in place R and from that you are trying to deduce Q R R. So now it is uh, like this so what we will be doing is simply is that we will be using some principles uh, truth preserving principles plus the assumptions that are there in this uh, particular kind of problem and then we will deduce uh, P and Q are not R this is the first one and the second one is P and Q and 
uh, from this you are reducing q r not r. So now we are trying to prove this uh, particular kind of thing using rule of conditional proof and we will also prove it with the help of REA. So now in this uh, RCP uh, you have to list out all the premises and then this is what you are trying to generate all after using these assumptions taken together with the principles which are sitting at our background. So if you add these things to it somehow you need to uh, generate this particular kind of conclusion. So now uh, there may be uh, n number of ways to come to this particular kind of conclusion sometimes you might employ 4 steps or maybe 5 steps etc and all. So uh, what constitutes an effective proof is this that whenever your proof ends in finite in finite steps in finite intervals of time then it is considered to be an effective proof. Suppose if, if I showed that Q R R follows after 15 steps and all so that does not serve to be a, an effective proof and all but some others comes with a, a proof in which uh, it includes only 6 or 7 steps then that is definitely considered to be uh, an effective kind of proof. So now uh, taking these assumptions into consideration uh, the first thing that we will be doing is this thing. So now P and Q are not R so this is the first assumption and all uh, either P or not Q is true or not R is true that is what it essentially says. So now we are assuming that the first one is true because the moment uh, you say that uh, P and Q are not R then one of these things is true P and Q are R P implies R so the second one is P implies R. So now this is the assumption that we have uh, begin with so now P and Q uh, the conjunction rule says that from P and Q we can deduce P and from P and Q we can even deduce Q also this simple law of conjunction. So now fifth step this is uh, law of conjunction the same thing so now uh, sixth step now we need to observe these two things 2 and 4 mode exponents will give us uh, r. So now uh, so now you need to observe 1 and 6 so now this is exactly opposite of this one now we have a rule distinctive syllogism suppose if x r y is a case and not y is a case that means you are ruling out this possibility that means whatever is left is the one which is the one which you will be deducing x is the case. So now here so we can take it as capital R so this is R and your not R and all so this possibility goes out and then what we will have so P and Q again you will be deducing the same thing and all it is not making a big thing and all so now uh, since Q is already true so we know that under the fifth step Q is already true so now you can safely add another kind of a proposition any kind of strange kind of proposition without disturbing the truth value of it because Q is already true so why it is the case because the semantics of this one P R Q is like this P and Q so T T F and F T F T F so this P R Q will become false only in this case when both disjuncts are false in all other cases it becomes T so now it is in this sense Q is already true so now we need to observe this particular kind sorry so these these rows and all for example Q is already true that means these two things which you need to take into consideration. So now irrespective of whether P is false or P is T and all so now P or Q is also going to be T only so it does not matter whether not R is true or false but it, it still holds and all so this rule is called as law of addition so for example if you have P you can safely add another Q to this one without disturbing the truth value of this one. So ultimately what we are trying to do is we are moving from truth to another truth now. So 
we are not disturbing the truth values of this thing if p is true p r q has to be true irrespective of whether q is to true or q is false it is in that sense we have written this particular kind of step q r not r so now this is exactly the one which we are trying to prove now we need to write justification on the right hand side otherwise uh, we will not be able to make out what exactly we have done so it is law of addition so that justifies why we are writing this particular kind of thing so now you draw a line from here to here and then so this is what uh, I can say that rule of conditional proof now you can formulate the same problem and all you can say that P and Q are not R comma P implies R and then this leads to Q R not R because we showed that Q R not R follows from these two premises and all. So in this way one can prove this particular kind of uh, whether or not the conclusion follows from the premises or not but there is another way of proving it that is what is called as reductio ad absurdum method. So this goes like this first you list out the premises and all R not R and then you list out the same thing now we are following reductio ad absurdum method. So the idea here is is that if x leads to its contradiction uh, leads to some con contradiction that means it is not x and all but it should be not x. So this is the idea which is commonly employed in uh, proving many theorems in mathematics. So instead of showing that something is true what you will you will start with the negation of that one and then you will show that assuming that the negation of a particular thing leads to contradiction so that is why not x is uh, false and all that means x has to be true. So now uh, P R R this is these are the two premises now separated by that you have a conclusion. So now in the third step what you will do is in the reductio ad absurdum method what you will do is you will negate the conclusion and then you will construct it uh, you will see whether or not uh, it leads to contradiction or not. So now if you simplify this one using De Morgan's laws it will become not Q and R. So now this can be further simplified into not Q and R. So this is for simplification for simplification you get this one and uh, this is De Morgan's laws we have used here so that is why I wrote D E M. So now uh, observe this uh, this uh, so now P R and this one so what you will get is P and Q. So how did we get this one 6 and 1 disjunctive syllogism you got this one. So this is nothing but writing the same thing P and Q. So now 7 simplification you get this one 7 simplification you got Q. So now in this proof the problem is this that you have Q here and you have not Q here. So that means in the 10th step what you need to write is Q and not Q. So now what you do here, here is, is that uh, starting from 1 to 9 1 to 9 reductio ad absurdum. So what has happened uh, in the 11th step what you whenever you come across Q and not Q you mention it with this particular kind of symbol that is a contradiction. So negation of uh, the conclusion leads to contradiction and all suppose if you take this as x so now x led to this one contradiction so we showed that negation of uh, x leads to contradiction so that means uh, it should be it should not be negation of x but it should be negation of negation of x so that means if negation of x leads to contradiction that means it is negation of negation of x that means x one. So what is our x here it is q r not r. So what essentially we did here is, is that we, we have taken into consideration that the conclusion does not follow from the premises and all then we 
uh, we used principles of uh, nat natural principles of logic and then ultimately we came up with a contradiction and then since taking the negation of that one lead to the contradiction that is negation of x x is uh, this one q or not r that leads to contradiction so that is why it is negation of negation of that particular kind of thing is true that means not not of x is using double negation rule of double negation you can say that x is true so what is x for, for us x is nothing but q r not r the original conclusion remains in all so uh, this is uh, uh, sometimes it is uh, simpler than the first method that we have used using rule of conditional proofs um, sometimes it will be so difficult for example suppose if you are given uh, if you are given uh, something which is not a theorem and all so then you will keep on proving it proving it and all and then ultimately you will not be able to prove anything so instead of that uh, maybe you can use reductio ad absurdum method and things will become simpler now so now any formal axiomatic system uh, these uh, three things should come as an outcome and all so they are law of identity law of excluded middle which says p or not p and law of non contradiction that is it is not the case that simultaneously p and not not p are true so now this is uh, considered to be some of uh, one of the trivial kind of proofs and all but still it holds it involves only two steps and all so in, for proving p implies p you start with an assumption uh, you need to note that all assumptions are obviously considered to be true if you take uh, your assumption itself is to be false and all there is nothing we can prove it is already assumed that it is true it is true and all so now in this case what you will do is you write the state the assumption and then you will reiterate the same assumption p since you got p from p only so now you draw a line from p to p and then you say that p plus p is proved by using rule of conditional proof nothing actually we didn't do anything here but still this is considered to be uh, effective proof in the natural deduction so what we have used is reiterated rule which we have used and then rcp you can also prove p plus p using reductio ad absurdum method also you take into consideration negation of p plus p and then it is p and not p then that is a contradiction so that is why negation of p plus p leads to contradiction that means not not of p plus p is true that is p plus p so in the same way in your natural deduction system or any formal logical system and all uh, these are the things which should come as an outcome and all. so later we are when we consider axiomatic uh, propositional logic there we try to prove these theorems using uh, uh, some of the important axioms uh, axiomatic systems such as Bertrand Russell Whitehead axiomatic system or Hilbert Ackermann's axiomatic system so now let us assume that uh, let us uh, consider a proof for law of excluded middle p r not p this we are trying to prove it with the help of uh, reductio ad absurdum method so as a first step what you will do is you negate the uh, formula well formed formula that is given to you that is not of p or not p. so now in that uh, let us consider that p is your assumption uh, that is there in the law of excluded middle and then so p is the assumption that we have uh, and then you can add uh, since p is already true you can add any uh, proposition whether it is true or false that means you are adding not p here using law of addition so now uh, 1 and 3 that is not of p or not p and p or not p these are contradic uh, uh, 1 and 3 in conjunction leads to contradiction and all so because it is not p or p p or not p and p or not p and all it is x, or x and not x so that for that what you need to do is uh, you whatever you assumed is wrong and all that means not p is the case so now again you add for 5 you add uh, p to it because not p is already true you add p to it it will become p or not p and again uh, 1 and 6 1 is not of p or not p that is the assumption that we have and then we got p or not p these two are in contradiction to each other and that means it should be not of p or not p is the case so that means by double negation you can prove that p or not p is the case so these are some of the ways to prove uh, these theorems and all so this is considered to be one of the important instances of paradox of material implication so it says that um, 
a true preposition is implied by any kind of strange kind of preposition in P implies Q implies P when P is true that means the consequent is true our semantics allows us that obviously Q implies P is all going to be true irrespective of whether Q is true or false and that makes since in P implies Q implies P Q implies P is already true then P implies Q implies P will also become true now so that makes the whole conditional true so that means any true preposition is implied by any strange kind of proposition like Q here in this case so how do we prove this particular kind of thing this is considered to be a valid formula in classical logic so all the valid formulas needs to find a proof you have to find a proof for those valid formulas so again you start with the, so whenever you have a formula like this you assume the antecedent part of your conditional that is P and then you will also consider the inner conditional and all that is Q plus P in that Q is considered to be the antecedent so you assume these two things so now we already proved that P plus P is the case earlier so now 1 and 3 modus ponens you will get P and then since P is proved from Q that means from 2 and 4 if you observe it then from Q you got P in your proof after travelling certain distance you got P since you got P from Q you write it as Q plus P and then you will state from where you got this particular kind of thing from 2 to 4 using rule of conditional proof you get Q plus P since Q plus P you got it from 1 that is P so that means P plus Q plus P is the case so this is the way to prove some theorems in this way so now what we will do here is is that so we can extend it extend the natural reduction principles this method to solving some kind of problems which we commonly come across in our day to day discourse so here is the English language sentence first what you will do is you will translate it into the language of prepositional logic and then you will talk about whether or not the argument is valid or not so this argument goes like this God is omni benevolent provided that he is perfect suppose if you represent God is omni benevolent is as P and he is perfect is represented as Q for example if you say that he is not perfect it becomes not Q now the second premise if God is both perfect and creator of the world that is a conjunction and followed by that there is a conditional uh, then there is no evil in the world there is a evil in the world is yes no evil in the world is represented here as not as now the third proposition is it is supported by some other uh, things premises but it is an incontestable fact that there is evil in the world that means s is the case so now furthermore it is supported by some other statement that is it is usually claimed that God created the world that is represented as R so from that you go uh, the conclusion is is that if God is imperfect that is not P uh, or he is not omni benevolent so now how to show that this uh, argument uh, uh, is valid using natural deduction method so there are uh, two ways to show that whether or not the conclusion follows from the premises or not so either we can use uh, rule of uh, conditional proof or you can use uh, uh, reductio ad absurdum method so this is the first premise uh, and the second one is uh, Q and R Q and R implies not S uh, and then S and R and followed by that there is a conclusion not P R not Q so now we translated uh, the English language sentence into simply uh, the symbolic form and all now we will forget about God and all these things and all so now we will be manipulating these symbols and all so so in the reductio ad absurdum method I will be using the second method and all which is relatively simpler so what you will do is you start with the denial of the conclusion so the, what is the conclusion here so this is the conclusion not PR not Q so now you deny the negation of the conclusion so there are two ways of showing that whether or not uh, whether this argument is valid or not so we are not sure whether this argument is valid or not that is why we are taking into consideration the reductio ad absurdum method I mean 
So taking the negation of the conclusion whether or not this leads to contradiction or not is the one which we are trying to see. So now this if you can simplify it this will become P and Q using De Morgan's laws negation of negation of P is P and negation of con disjunction will become conjunction and negation of negation of Q is Q. So now uh, this can be written as P and Q uh, this is 6 simplification you will get this one. Nine. So now 1 and 7 mod exponents you will get Q 1 and 7 you will get uh, Q here uh, so now observe this particular kind of thing 2 and 3 so it is like uh, X implies Y and then not Y so this is a rule called as modus tollens so if not Y is the case you need to deny X also so that is the modus tollens rule so that means 10th one uh, you have not S here and S here that means you have to deny the uh, if you deny the antecedent uh, consequent you have to deny the antecedent also that means it is Q and R. So how did we get this one uh, from 3 2 and 3 modus tollens you got this one. So now this uh, can be written as not Q or not R. So now, so you have Q here and you have not Q here. So this uh, nine and eleven disjunct Q syllogism leads to eleven is this one. So it leads to not R. So now, under uh, in the fourth step and all, we have R here. I mean above. So now we are going like this. So now observe in the fourth step we have R here and in the twelfth step you came across not R. So that means it is R and not R. In the fourteenth step it is a contradiction X and not X is a contradiction. So how did we generate this contradiction in the fifteenth step what you will do here is this that negation of not P or not Q led to contradiction. So since it leads to contradiction that is X implies this contradiction then it is not X so that means uh, if that is the case if this whole thing is considered as X X implies contradiction then it should be not of not of X so that is under the 17th step we can show that not of not e or not Q is the case that means this is the conclusion that we are trying to achieve. So this is the actual thing which follows and all that is the conclusion actual and original conclusion. So what is that we have achieved in this one simply this that we denied the conclusion that is we denied that uh, it is not the case that God is imperfect or uh, he is not omnibonevolent. Now you have to translate it into the original argument and all then we showed that it led to contradiction and all. that means negation of X leads to contradiction that means X is the case and all. that means the conclusion remains the same the conclusion holds uh, provided you follow this uh, uh, conclusion follows from the premises that are stated here that is God is omnivalent provided that he is perfect etc. So in this way we can translate the English language sentences in appropriately into the language of propositional logic and then you can apply this natural deduction method. But the problem here is, is that for example if the conclusion does not follow from the premises and all then suppose if you are using RCP that rule then uh, you will be working rigorously and ultimately you may not generate the conclusion that you are supposed to get. So if in an invalid arguments this uh, may not work uh, there you have to use semantic tableaux method or maybe uh, reductio ad absurdum method is the one which you need to employ. Sometimes proving a contradiction itself might find you might find it very very difficult and all. So in that case uh, complexity increases and all. So in the one hand you are verifying it on the other hand you are showing that something is not false and all. So that is what you are trying to do in the reductio ad absurdum method. So like this we can 
talk about several examples where we can employ uh, either uh, rule of conditional proof or uh, reductio ad absurdum method. Suppose if you are trying to prove this particular kind of thing whether P implies Q follows from not of P and not Q and here is the a proof reductio ad absurdum kind of proof you start with an assumption so that is not of P and not Q that is assumption and then uh, and you take the antecedent part of the uh, consequent that uh, conditional uh, that is P in the right hand side you will find that one. So now our assumption is is that not Q is the, our assumption. So what essentially we are trying to do is we are considering a case in which you have true premise and a false conclusion and all. If you take the first one not of P and uh, not Q as true and then P implies Q as false and then that means you are taken into consideration a counter, uh, counter example and all. So that, that creates us a kind of counter example. So now from this uh, P and not Q is our assumption already. So 2 and 3 if you use law of conjunction it will you will get P and not Q. So now we have from 1 and 4 on the one hand we have not of P and not Q and we have P and not Q these two leads to contradiction. So that means we started with the not Q as our assumption that has to be false that means Q has to be true that is what we got it in the seventh step now from the sixth step by using double negation rule you will get Q. So now since you got from 2 you got 7 so that is Q, Q is obtained from P that means you can draw a line from P to Q all the way from 2 to 7 and you say that P implies Q can be deduced by using rule of conditional proof in that what you will do is you will discharge your assumptions P Q etc and all and you will start talking about P implies Q. There are some other notions uh, uh, which are uh, important that is syntactic validity any argument a1 a2 to an and from that b follows uh, is valid in a syntactic sense especially when a conjunction of all the formulas a1 and a2 a to an uh, is valid in uh, a particular kind of language here. So what essentially we are trying to show is, is that uh, when you show that all uh, whatever you proved is also valid that means true tautology valid are all one of the same and all all the tautologies are valid formulas and all valid formulas are obviously tautologies and all. So if we show that uh, all your proofs uh, the theorems that, that is the last step of your proof so that is a valid formula it is a tautology then, then also you are said to have uh, talked about you are you talked about syntactic validity. So, so these are some of the important things your deduction natural deduction system is also considered to be consistent that means you will not be able to derive both x and not x and all. So if you derive that particular kind of thing x and not x then your natural deduction system is inconsistent. So with this we will end this particular kind of natural deduction method. So what essentially we did uh, here is like just like uh, some players are playing a game and all uh, suppose if you are playing a cricket etc you one must be in a position to know all the rules and all as far as possible uh, many rules then you will be able to play without any faults and all. Suppose if you are playing a cricket and if you do not know what is a no ball and what is a white ball etc and all and you will not be in a position to play uh, without any faults and all. So in the same way natural deduction has as far as possible very limited set of axioms and all that means there are no self evident truths etc to begin with but you start with some assumptions which are also always considered to be true and then you add it to that you have some basic principles of logic such as modus ponens modus tollens etc and all all these rules are truth preserving rules truth preserving in a sense that a conclusion necessarily follows from the premises and all and you will take those particular kind of truth preserving rules and then you will deduce some other theorems and all. So what essentially uh, we are we are trying to do in the natural deduction is, is that all the valid formulas should find a proof. And all. So here is a formal logical system which makes use of natural deduction uh, which is considered to be consistent complete and even sound. So that takes care of uh, our, uh, uh, our uh, 
uh, enquiry that uh, all the valid formula should find a proof so here is a uh, proof which we can produce it with the help of natural deduction system so in the next class we will be talking about uh, uh, another decision procedure method which is called as uh, conjunct conjunctive and disjunctive normal forms.